Yeah, response video, I guess. Um, video I hadn't seen. Uh, this warbles on a, a lot guy. Um, you know, I've I've talked to him before. I, I you know I like him, likable sort of guy. But you know, he really is a <laughs> whatever an earth fundy. Um, you know, life just I uh, well, whatever he finds it somehow just so charming. Um, but anyway, so let's just you know the first part of his videos was about. Um, you know, the whole energy thing, you know, dealing, getting on in life without uh, being hooked up to the, the grid. And uh, some of that's valuable stuff. You know, I, I'm all for that kind of minimize your footprint in, in all kinds of ways, carbon and suffering and otherwise. Um, you know, just, yeah, leave, don't leave a mark, you know? Yeah, don't leave a mark. Um, <laughs> you do no harm. Uh, so yeah, that, you know, that's positive stuff. Um, I don't know how practical it is. I mean, I wish there was ways to do this uh, on a scale that could meet the demands of civilization and such. I mean, I'm now watching TV on these little, you know, in my little picture frame. So it's supposed to be 9 watts of electricity. You know, so that's really, really low. Um, you know, it's one-tenth of a light bulb. Well, it's less than that. Um... Yeah, I mean it's it's low, so that's that's cool. I like that. Um, but anyway, um, what's my point? Yeah, I just did that just so now I'm ready. The next power failure, I'll be ready. So I can run this thing for hours and hours and hours and hours off of a battery. So that'll be cool. Um, but yeah, you know, I'll do this. I'll be watching the same stuff over and over again. So mm, that'll be a little rough. So anyway, on to the video. Sorry. Yeah, just you know, I warbled on a lot. Uh, too much. So anyway, this is the part of the video where he starts getting on the subject. So he did four minutes on the green crap, and uh, now he begins being a snarky old man. Horns to tickle his magnum opus. I pointed out that what my daughter finds offensive and what I also find offensive about the entire anti-natalist rave is the theory that the moment of suffering is so important to the sentient individual that that moment of suffering eclipses the rest of their life. Everything that happens before the suffering, everything that happens after. The mm, yeah, I don't even think that's the equation. You know, I mean, we're not really making that argument that you have this moment of suffering and then it's all over and everything's just fine. No, life is this mixed baggy thing, and the point is, is overall, you know, it's not about your individual life. So even if I was really lucky and was living pretty well, I think I could, I would hope, I could still appreciate it through my little moments of badness. You know, that other people live much harder lives, much more miserable lives. Um, lives that don't have redeeming accomplishment. You know, they, they die in world wars when they're 20 years old. Really insidiously and harshly and terribly. And there's no happily ever after silver lining crapola to those kind of stories. Families are ruined. Kids are orphaned. Mothers die of cancer. This this shit happens, and that's more about what the story is. The story is is would you play this game? Would you put money in this jukebox? Would you put money in this vending machine? Would you um, want to stop this thing, this grinder of noise and and mayhem? That's the argument. It's just not just about a personal impression, nor in your statement, are you accounting for the nature of our addiction, which is always going to make us say it was worth it? Um, we'll, we'll endure a lot. You have to beat us up pretty hard. Uh, you know, and especially in hindsight, especially when we're after, on the other side of the, the hardship, the broken leg, for example. It's always easy to laugh at it when you're on the other side of it. But if you were facing it as a prospect, you know, if tomorrow you had to know it was going to happen and you had to endure it and you could see it coming, um, those are two different ways of living life. And, and reality sort of dictates that you have to be intellectual. You have to sort of bend your imagination to understand that it is a big difference when you're seeing it coming at you and when it's behind you. It's not really that easy to see when it's behind you. Suffering 
and that anti-natalists want to define every victim by the incident which traumatised them. Well, again, that's... I don't even see that as even being a periphery of the argument. I mean, it really isn't anything to do with anti-natalism where we're saying, you know, one incident of something or some, you know, that's just a, that's trivializing. It's, it's short, it's short shrift. It's a cheat of the argument. Okay. It's a way of just saying, you know, funny beard. (laughs) You know, it just isn't an argument. You got to do a little better than that. And I admit that while I was making the movie, I was pretty peeved that uh, the tickety-boo-boo had called me a psychopath and she'd called my daughter a sociopath because we dared to disagree with her ideas on pseudo-logic. Pseudo-logic. Well, whatever. Again, you're you're just, you know, you're pretty snarky. Um, You have to go find your daughter. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I have to go, go looking for that. Does she wobble also? Warble? But I did manage to float something of a challenge to the anti-natalists worldwide, and it's this. If you people reckon that anti-natalism is not a psychopathology, then how about you go and explain it to a psychiatrist? Well, let's not even talk about the, um, you know, the sanity of the average psychologist or psychiatrist. They're usually in those fields because they sort of have an affinity for it. You know, you know they're driven to it by their own psychosises. Um, certainly the ones I have met have been, um, textbook neurose, no, 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 you know, just, just full of neuroses. Um, so, you know, all kinds of bullshit driving their train. Um, so let's understand that there's two parts to that science, okay? There are the real researchers who are dedicated to the idea of understanding human psychology, understanding the mechanism of the mind and what happens to it, and how it does all this reverse crap, and how, like, if something bad happens to you, then you end up doing the same bad to somebody else because you gain an appreciation for it because you think it built your character or some other kind of crap. Um, Lots of psychology to examine it. But then there's a whole whole focus of this this industry, and that's what it is. It's an industry selling pharmaceuticals. it, you know, is focused on this idea of just making people happy, making them functional. I mean, it's one of the descriptors of um, disease, is that it, you're not compatible with the, the, the civilization zoo. So, I mean, if we did that, would we do, would do, we do that to animals? Would we say those animals are crazy because they didn't like our captivity? I don't think we could get away with that, could we? No, I don't think so. I think that would be a pile of shit. <laughs> um, so... Uh, again, this is a pretty lame argument. I mean, you know, it, it, if psychiatry was to label you something, you, I think you would find it pretty easy to say that's really not um, a source I have to respect. Uh, I, you know, so I, I don't, I don't even think you have any real respect for it. You're just using it because it's a convenient little snarky shot. But again, it's a cheap one. Well, I reckon you're going to find yourselves being diagnosed with a subclinical, semi-suicidal depression. Well, whatever, semi-suicidal is that a is that a medical term? <laughs> I mean, come on, you either are or you aren't, aren't you? Come on, that's like a little bit pregnant or something. What the fuck? <laughs> um, and and regardless, who 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 made you king of what a a a, a, a proper psychology is? What what the uh, proper response to a circumstance is? Now, how do you, from where do you derive your authority to tell me that these authorities know what they're talking about, or they have any idea or any clue whatsoever about um, what the proper response is? What would be the proper response if you were in a war and you watched ten of your good buddies get killed in one day? What is the proper response, asshole? Hmm. I mean, is there anything that I could describe where the proper response would be? Fuck this. Is anybody ever allowed to say, fuck this, in your opinion? Huh? Without being labeled a psychotic, neurotic, fuck, uh, you know, all this other crap? Huh? Crazy old bearded fucker nutter. Which has nihilistic and necrophiliac tendencies. Oh, so some more little cheap crap nihilistic. Uh, you know, I wish people would either choose Neil or Nile. 
But anyway, this you know now you're going to redefine these words. Ugh, this is just so disgusting. These well, what a waste of my goddamn fucking time. I say nihilistic because nihilism does not mean nothing matters as the tickety boo boo would like it to be. <clears throat> oh yeah, well no, that's only uh, you know if we if we actually did a survey of people who've actually read what the premise is of the argument. Which is that, it, yeah, there, there is nothing but your own welfare um, because everything else is negated as having any reality. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, that's whatever. It's the philosophy of um, you're here, make the best of it for you personally. And there's nothing else you can do that matters. Nihilism it is the idea of reducing everything to nothing so that you can build a fair and just society afterwards. That's what Paul Pock was trying Well, I'm sorry. It, it, there's nothing in, in, in any nihilistic philosophy that has anything at all to do with any building of justice. It doesn't believe there is such a thing as a moral crime or any need for anything called justice. So that's just preposterous drivel. Going to do. He wanted to reduce everything to nothing. The anti-natalists, they want to reduce everything to nothing and they don't want to build anything back afterwards. Well, whatever. Uh, you know, these, again, this is just a, a silly way to describe what we're talking about. We're describing attempting to, I'll metaphor it as curing a disease, let's say, or, or, or stopping the momentum of a syndrome, or, you know, disengaging the engine of the, the mechanism of the, the, the process, because the process doesn't have any justifiable function, and it has a consumption issue. It, it is consuming more than it's producing. That's that's the question. It's consuming more than it's producing. That's the argument that has to be made. If we're correct that it's consuming more than it's producing, everything we're saying about stopping it is perfectly rational. Okay? There's no point in arguing about reducing and this and all this other crap. Explain to me how it's producing more than it's consuming. The anti-natalists are nihilists who are aiming at an absence of life. And they're atheists, and they don't see any difference between preconception and post-mortem. As far as they're concerned, the two are equivalent. So they're aiming at death, absence of... Well, whatever. So, yeah, so you're an, uh, not only an earth fundy, but I guess you got some sort of religious notion that you're going somewhere after death. Okay, fine. If you go senile, are you going to go there to <laughs> senile? Um, yeah, how old are you going to be in heaven, right? Is it going to be your perfect age, your perfect, um, are, are you going to have your, like, like some sort of maximized knowledge base? You're not going to be as smart as you were 10 years ago or 10 years later. Your perspective is going to be whatever it is at some certain moment when you die. Is that going to be the perspective you take with you? Kind of a complicated, tricky question, isn't it? Because if it isn't the truth, that, that, that there's going to be some maximized philosophy, then it's not going to be even who you were when you were dead, right? Because ten years ago you could have had the right answers. You caught on to some dopey, silly idea of the New World Order or some other kind of nutty crap, and you started wearing a tinfoil hat and became a lunatic. And so which one of you goes to heaven, the tinfoil hat lunatic or the guy ten years before that who actually had a rational perspective? life equals death. And if you're aiming at death, you are a necrophiliac. Necros is death and philos is love. Yeah, well, whatever. Like I said, I can just play games. We can make beard jokes all fucking day. Okay? I mean, what, you know, you're talking out of your fuzzy ass. I mean, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, you really, you know, you really think I want to fuck dead people? Is that your argument? So you're going to take a word that has a common meaning and you're going to pervert it and bend it so you can include a whole bunch of other people in that category. Well, fine, but it's stupid. It's, it's stupid and silly. It's a waste of my time. Again, it's not an argument. It's just a cheap, slanderous little kind of mud throwing. It's duty throwing. You're just a monkey throwing poo. If you love death, if you're aiming at death, death for all... You are a necrophiliac. Oh, whatever. It's not about death, asshole. You See, you just a minute ago said, I don't know the difference between after death and, and pre-birth. And apparently you don't know the difference between dying and not being born. Those are two different things. I'm arguing that people shouldn't be having children, that it's not a controllable experiment, and it comes at this high liability risk that they have no capacity to buy insurance against the failure. 
the catastrophe takes place, the victim is ruined, and there's no way to fix it. And people just march on like nothing ever happened. Fifty million people die in World War II horribly, and we just march on like nothing goddamn happened. I mean, it's bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. The nearest, subclinically semi-suicidally depressed. Just well, well, whatever. I mean, we, we, I can argue that you're, you know, you've got pink balloon disease. You're, you're psychotically, um, um, you know, whatever, over-motivated or hyper um, horny aided for um, fuck wittiness. I mean, I don't know what, what the fuck, what, you, what the fuck you want me to call you? I mean, I'll just come up with some sort of name for people that are way too optimistic, way too hopeful, and way too, um, oh, there's got to be a right, the right word, I'm just not coming up with it. Um, but they will acquiesce to anything. They will be subservient to any kind of Borg psychology. You will just, you will drink your pink Kool-Aid, um, period, and, and play the game. And, and, uh, you know, I can, I can call that a psychology, a broken psychology. And you give me kind of evidence, because I can just point out that you have these ludicrous fantasies about what's going to happen to you after you're dead that are just fucking hilariously silly. So, I mean, you're obviously uh, psychotically deluded. I could say that. Your delusions are so preposterous that they make you a psychotic. Ask a psychiatrist. You'll find yourself having the entire DSM thrown at you. Well, well yeah, why don't, uh, I'll ask the president of Australia. How about that? Yeah, should I go get his opinion? Yeah. He's an important guy, right? Yeah, I'll go ask the president of Australia. I mean, what, what do you think qualifies a psychiatrist? Do you think there's a book of truth about what the goddamn reality of our circumstance is and whether or not, um, let's say, for example, uh, black leopards, right? They don't do very well in, in captivity, especially the old days. But let's just say, you know, black panthers. Um, you know, a high percentage of them go batty and do the pacey thing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for the rest of their life. Polar bears, too, unfortunately. It really does happen to them. You know, one in like twenty. You know, go batshit insane. Um, but anyway, let's let's see. so so you're going to tell me that the proper response for those animals is the, that's the broken animal, right? Because it's not accepting captivity. It's not accepting a, a, a life that doesn't mean anything to it. And so it's a psychotic now. I mean, come on. You're gonna you're really going to play that game that there's some book that some psychiatrist reads and says exactly what somebody should think life is. That they think a replicating DNA molecule. They know the truth about the replicating DNA molecule, and they know that all the replicating DNA molecules should, um, you know, not allow any of their psychology that might tell them, "Oh fuck, I've been so gamed by a molecule." No, they shouldn't believe that. They should just keep drinking their pink Kool Aid. I mean, fuck you. You don't have any evidence of this. Yeah, you know, this is not a, a, a credible authority. I mean, really, this is bullshit, fella. Being suicidal is a very fashionable but unpopular condition in today's collapsing society. Well, whatever. I don't even know about unpopular, but who cares? Again, well, why would I care what's popular? That is not relevant. That's not an intelligent standard. So, again, who cares? And, in my view, the anti-natalists are a bunch of Miserable people who want to project their miserable view of the universe onto everybody else. You see it? Oh, whatever. It's not a miserable view of the universe. Again, we're talking about what's the real view. What What is the universe, okay? And we know what it is. The universe is a lot of hot gas, okay? And it's a lot of just fucking matter smashing into matter. And we're doing this little eccentric, bizarre thing on the crust of a planet because of a DNA molecule that's replicating itself in over four billion years, acquiring a bunch of guns and bullets and knives and swords as little tools to go out into the world and steal little packets of energy. And it's all playing this game for absolutely no reason. There's no fucking bag of potato chips at the end, no grilled cheese sandwich, no nothing. It's just a big waste of fucking energy.
suffering is nothing but suffering, then you think everybody else should see it that way. Right. Well, again, that's not the argument. There is suffering. And on the alternative side, there is this thing called satisfied desire that's a little bit mushy. All right? A satisfied addiction. A satisfied hunger. Um, you know, a sense of comfort that you're only going to derive if you have a sense of discomfort first. You have to have an unsettling want and ache uh, for the cake to have value. There has to be something pulling you towards it. And uh, that's, a, that's just an easy psychological phenomenon. I mean, that's not one we can even debate, really. That's as, that's as round as the earth in terms of its, you know, we're there, okay? We know that our psychology is playing us, is gaming us that way. Um, well, I'll give you an example. Uh, <clears throat> so, so I'm not somebody who hates life, right? So here I was a kid, and we went to Disneyland when I was nine years old, I think, uh, ten, something like that. Went right uh, straight across the whole country. Went to Disneyland, and so yeah, you're at Disneyland. You're like, holy shit, I'm at Disneyland. There's the castle thing, and you're and you start realizing, oh, I just walked through the castle thing. It's made like out of cardboard. Well, okay, so it's not a real castle, um, but anyway, um, yeah. So you, so you go and you get on a ride. I remember I went on this jungle ride, right? And the whole time I'm on the ride, I'm looking at the water and saying, boy, this is awful muddy water. And I'm starting to see, oh, it's a canal, and there's train tracks that the boat's running on. Okay, the guy's pretending to, like, steer it every now and then, but he's not really doing that. This old boat's just going on a train track in the water. Um, and it herky-jerky's now and then to let you really know it. You know, it's some animated, you know, hippopotamuses come out your face and shit out of the water. And, whoa, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um... But yeah, the whole time I'm just kind of like looking at it saying, okay, it's, you know, <laughs> you know, so I had this big build up. I'm going to Disneyland, but it was kind of, you know, the only part I really liked was, you know, they had a, a repair shop you could actually access where they were fixing the broken uh, robots. And, uh, you know, I spent an hour and a half on that ride, you know, just watching the tech guys fucking with the the the, the stripped down robots um, and they had an a, a blink and making a speech he was pretty good but it was air conditioned it was a hot day so that's the reason why I like that one but, but anyway those are the, my two favorite rides I mean uh, so so this is let's look at life as an amusement park all right um, now, if you went to an amusement, a real reality amusement park, right? It's a reality amusement park. People go through the tunnel of love, and they come out, you know, sliced to pieces with razor blades. <laughs> okay, I mean, the the real amusement park isn't very amusing. Okay, reality, the amusement park, isn't really all that a fucking amusing. There's real horror happening in it. All right, and what are these? And and but the rides are still just the good stuff. Is still just as cotton candy, pink, cheap, sugary crap. It's still pretty fucking empty, um, and vacant, and 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 superficial, and frivolous, to be paying that horrendous blood price for it. And you're only romantically attached to it because you're a, a stoic. You're someone. Well, let's just buck up and keep mushing through the shit. Why? Well, my DNA molecule told me to, and and the psychiatrist told me to. He said it was the right thing to do is to keep mushing through the shit. Eat shit. That's what the psychiatrist told me. Eat the shit, fucker, and shut up. I mean, that's all you're saying. You're not explaining how I've somehow misinterpreted the reality, and that the reality isn't full of maggots and and crap and piss and shit, and it's disgusting. You're wallowing, you're, you're, you're swimming and romping and playing in a fucking cesspool. Explain to me how I'm wrong. Well, well, heads up, fellas, we don't. We see more than suffering. We see joy as well. Now, Gary, your channel on YouTube, all of them, they're more or less devoted to propagating, ha-ha, snicker-snark, anti-natalism. You want to make the world a better place by getting rid of all the humans... And you want to make the universe a better place by getting rid of all the life. Okay, well, I agree that lots of humans are fucking idiots and the world would be a lot better if there was less of them around. But my YouTube channel is purely there to publicise 
the idea of hybridising your vehicle's electrical system. <laughs> okay, so now he's going to do on this stuff. I don't know if, the, I mean, maybe I'll watch it, but I don't think I'll respond to it video-wise. Um, yeah, it's really nice. All this, like I said, all this hybrid stuff is really great, but everybody doesn't live in a place that gets quite as much atmospheric photons. Um, this technology is not cheap uh, to make or manufacture. It's, you know, high energy production costs. Um, so, yeah, it's really not there yet, and I'm all for you selling it where you can, but you're not gonna you're not gonna drive anywhere on that. Okay, we know that. We know you're not getting nearly the yield the average civilized human expects um to get out of their um uh, light socket. <laughs> yeah. Um so you know, I'm all for it, but like I said, it's a it's we're a long way off in competing with oil and you know it. And uh you know we've got to live lifestyle changes are probably what it's more about. It's not even about the technology. It's about the lifestyle. And um, that's really going to be hard to sell because, you know, what's the, what's that, the, it's a long road to Tipperary. No, that's not the cliche. <laughs> you know, the, it's that thing is once you've already seen Paris, is that it? Once you've already, once you've seen Paris, you know, I mean, there's just no going back to, you know, Hicksville. You know, it just isn't going to work. You're just not going to take people who are being nurtured, okay, in, in you know, Energy Central and, and you know, drag them, um, you know, back to banging on drums. It's it's a nice idea, but it's going to be hard to, to, to get everybody to do your thing, okay? I mean, it takes a certain will, and um, I'm going to argue that most people, as much as you argue they have all this desire to live, that that's what the majority wants to do, and they're not willing to pay a very high price for it. Not if you put it right in front of them. Okay, like I said, when the price is behind them, they'll pay. Alright, but when it's in front of them, they're not going to, they don't want to pay shit in terms of, they don't even want to be mildly inconvenienced for the sake of the future. Oh, who cares? Um, they don't even pay attention to their, their own, the, the fact that their own, the bridge they're walking has a big hole coming up. They're all doomed to fall into the cavern of shit. I mean, they're not even paying attention to that truth. So anyway. Here we have a beaten up old Subaru Brumby, the way it left the manufacturer. The only way that this thing can get electricity into its battery is by burning fuel. The 25% efficiency in a piston engine, taking that torque and putting it through a two to one step up belt, which is 50% efficient, and running the torque at the higher RPM into an alternator that's 50% efficient. So you've got an overall efficiency of 3.5%. Congratulations. That means that a step. Well, I think that's an exaggeration, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, the, the alternator isn't the only thing the fan belt is running, so, I mean, that's just, you know, you're, you're, you're taking a lot of liberties there. The technology isn't that pitiful. Um, so, you know, um, yeah, I just think that's sort of bullshit. Sort of. Ended Subaru with an EA81 engine. 50 amp alternator and a 2 to 1 step up is going to burn 231 or so mils of fuel per amp hour. But not mine. Not when it's sitting here. Mine has got a 30 watt streamlined solar panel. Yeah, 30 watt at, uh, well, okay, 30, 30 watts, you know, is, is, you know, one third of a light bulb, right? One third of a hundred watt light bulb, right? I mean, you know, that whole big giant panel is going to give you one fluorescent light bulb. Mine has got a solar regulator which keeps the battery fully charged. Yeah, well, I got one of these in, you know, in my car. It's a little cheap one. You know, it's only a little solar panel. <laughs> you plug it into the lighter and it just adds a little boost to the, the battery. But it's very little boost. So, yeah, you've got a big giant booster. And yeah, it's great to have, but the point is, is your alternator still going to be spinning? All that stuff's going to be running when the car is on, unless you just disconnect the alternator, the charging system altogether. 
but the drag it is on the system is so minor you know it's just basically collecting some of the waste that the engine push produces just running right especially at an idle the lever the car is not being used saving 5.33 liters a week which is 35 percent of my pre-modification fuel burn yeah well again i don't want to argue your figures but i'm just not sure you're going to save that much unless you know, I'd have to see exactly how much idle time you spend on the car and a lot of other things because, frankly, like I said, all that fuel doesn't go to running an alternator. 266 liters of petrol per year and 750 kilograms of carbon dioxide that I no longer emit. So... Yeah, like I said, I, I just think that's kind of bogus. Like I said, engines aren't performing efficiently enough for you to be able to extract the charging system from the drag on the system. Now, if you, if you disconnect your air conditioner, that's probably a more reliable, um, definite advantage because when that thing's engaged, I mean, those little magnets turn on, that's a hell of a drag on the system. Um, but alternators pretty much produce electricity whether it's wanted or not wanted um, so they're the drag they put on the system is not nearly as high so yeah I'm just I'm just I, I don't think you've effectively eliminated as much drag or friction off the system by having an alternative charging system so but yeah it's a nice try I mean it's, you know fun thing to do but how much how much that 30 watt panel cost my carbon emissions are now 9 tonnes per year, whereas they used to be 9.7 tonnes per year. And yes, I have weighed the firewood. Yeah, I see 9 tonnes versus 9.7 tonnes. Again, you're saying your alternator produced that's 0.7, and I'm just, I'm not buying that. The average Australian emits 29 tonnes per year, and the average American emits 27 tonnes per year, carbon dioxide emissions. Hmm. Australians are less efficient? That's weird. I guess it's all cooling or something? What is that? I don't get it. I mean, you should... Why are you less My efficient? My daughter lives in town connected to a coal-fired power station, so she's up there at the 29, 30 tonnes a year. My son lives under solar panels on a different property, but he's an auto electrician and air conditioning mechanic, so let's chalk him up as 29 tonnes anyway. So, between my two offspring and myself... I've got a spare 30 plus tonnes of atmospheric carbon going and that soaks up the emissions of the taxpayer whose taxes pay my pension. And rather than patent the idea of the Sunfoil, search Sunfoil Project playlist if you want to really get into it, I've publicised it, I've published it because prior publication prevents patent. And you know what? There are three cars in the world that have got Sunfoils on them. Everybody else is too busy sitting in there really at the bottom of the rut doing things. That well, I don't know if that's true. But like I said, I don't know if it's the, you know, you're, I just don't know if it's that beneficial. I mean, it, it, it might be better to be able to run your car regularly and even extract energy out of the car battery every day to the, your house. So to connect your car to your grid and actually use the energy that your e engine's inefficiency is going to be throwing away anyway because the engine can't... I, I don't know how to explain this, but the, the engine can only run at certain steps of performance. There's a certain minimum that's just the startup cost, just the running cost. And so it'll, it'll produce more torque just idling that's not getting accessed and so it can just create it's just creating heat it's just wasting energy but you can't really turn it down any you can't make it go slower you can't run at a slower idle without costing you efficiency in terms of friction and other kinds of liabilities and damage to the engine so this is the catch of the game this is that you know it's trying to get the most out of it and a lot of these you know very expensive um, hybrid cars try to take advantage of this on off kind of deal by supplementing with something that can be controlled very precisely an electric engine um, and so they use the electric engine to do the 
the light work um, and uh, to also generate electricity um, instead of braking. So they use the electric engine to as a, as that that might even be the more sensible place to gain huge benefit is to have a system in your car where you don't use friction to I mean you know heat friction to stop the car, slow the car down, where the car is always slowed down by a generator, because a generator will create drag um, on the system. So if you have an electric motor in the car, in the engine compartment tied to the engine, a real hardcore magnetic generator, a turbine essentially, um, use the turbine to slow the car down um, instead of a braking system. So at any point where you can you know, where you don't need immediate to stop immediately, you could use the drag of the generator to charge extra batteries. Yeah, I think you're going to save a lot more doing that than putting solar panels. I really do. Traditionally, why? Because they can't be bothered getting out of their own fucking mess, Gary. Like yeah, yeah, like I said, we, we're both going to be pretty cynical on what, you know... While we're here, I mean, we can both be nihilist in the sense that we can talk about what we do because we are here. Let's not talk about what life is, but let's just talk about the fact that we're here in this circumstance. And we both probably agree that unnecessary waste, suffering, friction, these are all negative things and they should be abolished wherever possible. So, yeah, we'll both put our hands up to that one. Uh, I'm just saying I am I I don't appreciate being injected into this slop and I don't... I especially don't like it when it's this sloppy because then I'm just compelled to play janitor and I didn't sign up I didn't sign a contract saying I gotta be janitor for the human race I mean fuck that um, this place is a pig <laughs> it's a mess it's a it's not even it's an insult to pigs this is this is you know pigs only live in styes when they come near humans it's humans that create pig styes that's the irony so it's really a human sty and we just throw pigs in it. Yeah, we do share the planet with an awful lot of sad sacks of shit. And uh, I can't do anything about that. But they could if they wanted to. Wake up. Well, we can. See, that's my whole argument. We can do something about all the sacks of shit. We can tell the sacks of shit that have had them to stop having them. We can encourage them to say, mm, give it some thought, uh, you little drunken whore. <laughs> you know? Um, you know, yeah, you, you got drunk, you had sex, and you're gonna, now you're pregnant, you don't have 58 cents to your name, maybe you ought to go see a doctor so you can get that fixed, okay? Because maybe you're in no place or condition or circumstance to be doing biological human experiments. Yeah, maybe your lab is a little underfunded. Up to themselves tomorrow. They could all become pacifists and vegetarians, you know? They could change their way of life. They could all... Yeah, well, like I said, they, uh, some change is really, I don't think, that hard. We can just m push the people. We can just kind of lean the floor a little bit, and they'll kind of tilt that way, you know? But some change is tough. Um, but, yeah, it's all possible. I mean, we got to where we are, okay? So, obviously, there's a road here, because I got here, all right? And there's a road to where you are, because you got to where you are. So we can be sure that the place that we're at is get toable because we got to it. Um, but still, that leaves the question, uh, I mean, is it really worth throwing more, I mean, good money after bad? I mean, we've been thoroughly screwed and ripped off. Is there really any point in throwing, investing more suffering in something that really can't go anywhere? only breed with one other partner. Think of what that would do for increasing the um, coefficient of happiness and removing the coefficient of misery and cutting the population. Only breed with one partner. Well, it's, there's lots of one partners that are doing most of the breeding, so that's really, you know, like I said, it's a small percentage of the human race that's creating most of the human beings, okay? It's the people having three kids or more who are, are the real menaces. Um... Uh, I think, like I said, I don't know the statistics, but I think most people don't breed. However, mate, now um, we come to a point that I don't know whether you've ever heard of, crypto-semantics. You ever heard of crypto-semantics? It's, uh, it's the science of looking for secret meanings hidden in full view, in words in everyday use. So malevolence, for example, which dictionary definition is the essence of evil, 
Write it down and look at it. It's male violence with I removed. Male violence where I make no appearance. No. Yeah, well, whatever. I, look, what we are naturally is what we are naturally. I mean, we're we're animals at the core. So, um, yeah, like I said, I'm all for people having discipline mechanisms that control that animal impulse. Um, but again, that's going to require people who have some sort of responsible notion of what it is to have a kid and to raise one to be intelligent and reasonable. And I'm going to argue to you that it's not the intelligent and the reasonable who have children. It's fucking idiots. Levels. Essence of evil. Um, another bit of crypto-semantics is the word sophisticated. A lot of people think it means elegant. However... A sophomore is somebody in their second year out of high school at university when they think they know everything. Sophomoric means callow and immature. Sophisticated was first applied to artificial gemstones when people learned how to put impurities into the glass to make it appear to be a ruby or a sapphire or an emerald. Sophisticated means adulterated and impure. And think of all the fucking idiot yuppies plugged into their coal-fired power stations who take pride in how sophisticated they are, adulterers. Yeah, well, whatever. I, you know, who cares about all this semantics crap? Um, but, yeah, I mean, the word, to me, sophisticated has always had a little bit of a taint to it. Um, pretentious, fake, phony, you know. So, yeah. But, yeah, it does have a double meaning, and it also has this m meaning of, you know, more precise, sort of l tied to it a little bit engineered yeah that might be the way complicated yeah but again who, this isn't the word that's a big problem the words of big problems are words like happy and fun I just want to have fun 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 what the fuck is fun <laughs> God. fun 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 for everyone So, Gary, from a crypto-semantic point of view, the way you fall down is with your repeated use of the word just in fairly well everything that you say about life. Life is just cannibalism. Life is I don't just say that, but <laughs> I say lots of other words. Um, but I'm just, the point I'm making, the argument I'm making, is, is you take off the layers of sophistication. You take out the impurities of human ingrandizement, and you get back to the raw frame. Um, okay, and, and so it's just like somebody saying a car is just a means of transportation. I mean, that's basically what it is. Okay, we've turned it into something else, but that's what it is. Is just DNA consuming DNA. Life is just about biology. Life is just about replicating the species. Just, just, just. It's well, whatever. Like I said, you can, you can do this, and this is even not fair. Because I've also talked about how through this DNA evolution process, we have this intelligence, this capacity to see, to climb outside of the maze that life is, and to analyze it and to understand it. Okay, but yeah, through that process, through having that sophistication, um, yeah, we're able to do that. But the fact is, it is a maze. The fact is, it's just things um, navigating a structure that they've been thrown into. Um, and all the stuff we have are just tools developed by that DNA molecule. They're not something more than that. That's what they are. That's how they got here. Your favorite line, and you always use it as a put-down, Gary. You use... I don't use it as a put-down. What I'm saying it is is the put-down part, okay? I'm saying it's just a chase game, just a stupid chase game for the sake of chasing, reproduction for the sake of reproduction, survival for the sake of survival. Okay, there is no for the sake of some good, some accomplishment, some purpose, some um, redeeming accomplishment. There's no accomplishment here. It's all friction. That's all there is. There's friction. 
and you can reduce the friction, and we can agree on a lot of the friction to get rid of. But my argument is, theoretically, the, you know, most of the friction isn't even in the human organism, is in the animals that are out there eating each other. That, and it's completely unnecessary. There's been billions and billions and billions of them, and there doesn't need to be billions and billions and billions of more. They've done it all. They've walked every path. They've eaten every kind of shit. I mean, it's been done, and, and it's it's time to just stop it because it, it's 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 a huge pile of carnage and waste, and it doesn't do anything. It's waste for the sake of waste. So theoretically, ideally you just go all the way back to nothing. Because there's nothing here to justify it. Nothing. Nothing. There's no hunger in the universe for us to feed. We can't make, we can't cook a recipe, a, a little cupcake, and feed it to it. We, we can't do anything for that animal. We can't comfort it in one single way. We can't do anything. So there's just no point just where other people would use nearly or only. And where you've lost the plot, Gary, is that just is a contraction. Just is short for the word justifiable or justifiably. Well, there you go, see? And I'm all about those words. I love that word. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's hear your justification for perpetuating the um, maniacal... Well, I won't say maniacal... Uh, the the um, um, senseless, pointless, purposeless replication of a DNA molecule. So look at the last hundred hours or so of your anti-natalist videos and every case where you have used the word just, just bear in mind, justifiably, bear in mind that you've actually said life is justifiably DNA, consuming DNA, life is justifiably about reproduction of the species. Well, you want to play a word game, go ahead and play it, <laughs> but that's all that is, if you know it. So, whatever. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting for the justification. I'm, I'm waiting to hear it, and I'm not going to hear it. There is no justification. It's all just brown water in a boat on a train track and a fake hippopotamus. And I can say to you, life is just, justifiably, not only about suffering. There is just, justifiably, more to suffer. Well, whatever. I've pointed out what the big one is. Addiction. That's what it's about. It's about attraction and repulsion. It's about motivating little biological instruments to keep mushing through the humus, the corpses, and to eat their brains. I mean, it's about zombies. That's what we are. We're fucking zombies to a DNA mission. Um, look in the mirror. Sentience, then suffering, and perception of suffering. So, Munchkin, what it amounts to is that everything that you have complained about, you have also admitted, is justified in the grand scheme of things. And I don't know what's... Well, whatever. So, that's going to be your argument. The argument from grand scheme of things, you know... Yeah, I'm sorry. It's a, you know, God says so. Oh, fine. School of rhetoricians you um, subscribe to, but in my book, that makes your argument a fail, matey. A pretty big one, too. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Uh, the, the turd you just laid on the ground here was pretty big, too. And apart from the semantic content of the language that you use... There's still a really major drama involved in trying to define somebody by the moment of greater suffering in their life, when life is more than suffering. Oh, whatever. I didn't say it's not, you know, that there isn't more to life than brutal suffering, but I also said there's addiction, there's want, there's need, and all of this need doesn't need to exist. All of this want doesn't need to exist. It's want for the sake of want. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense, logically. It's only something a psychology can get lost in, all right? A, a brain, an intelligence, couldn't find a reason to do it. But even that is not as fairyland a step as the idea of um, dreaming up hypothetical suffering situations and getting your knickers twisted about shit that hasn't even happened. 
Oh, but what if, what if, what if? Well, those are kind of important things, actually. I mean, what if there is a World War III? And what if you're talking about billions of people dying under horrid circumstances? You're going to say that your nice sunny day today making your video was worth it? Uh, I'm not going to think so. Not so. What we're faced with at the moment, mate, is the fact that... Um 85% of the biological damage, biosphere damage, environmental damage in the last thousand years has happened in the last 100 years. Yeah, I know, but so what, you know? I mean, realistically, you know, the rest of the universe is going to try to kill us anyway, right? I mean, comets and meteors, oh my. And then you got all that other crap. neutron -y stars are going to, you know, hit you with x-rays and zap you all out of here in five seconds. I mean, there's all kinds of shit out there. Um, this planet is doomed, and that's it. It's doomed. The game is going to end, and the choice is, is let's put on our best suits, let's have a great dinner, let's do a nice little song and dance, and let's just exit stage left in a graceful and dignified manner. Let's not stay on the stage until we're a hundred years old, and you know we fall into the floodlights, and then we fall into the tuba upside down, and you know why make a mess? I mean, why do this the wrong way, when we can just do it the right way? And instead of sitting around burning coal in a power station to make computerized videos and upload them, telling everybody how they do be better off. Well, look, you know the amount of my energy consumption that involves this flip camera and uploading to YouTube is pretty minor. I mean, you know, if I had a Wi-Fi and a laptop, yeah, I could, you know, cut this down a bit. Um... So, yeah, but other things I do on the computer require a computer with some power, some resources. Um, so I can justify that just economically for my own welfare. But beyond that, um, it's just a silly argument. Again, this is not, this is not, you know, heating water on the stove, you know, is a week's worth of these videos. You know it. <clears throat> Why don't you dig a vegetable garden and try and work on the idea of... Because there's 658,000 deers in this state that desire to eat everything I plant in the ground because nobody will control their population because they like to sit in their couch and shoot deer outside their window um, because humans are sadistic lunatics that can't do anything right. Um, yeah, let's... Oh, we have a deer problem. Well, let's let the hunters take care of it. <laughs> they know a lot about nature. Um, yeah, so that's why. But yeah, I always had a garden until it became impossible. I mean, I need to build a moat and, you know, have bazookas and tanks, and you just can't stop these fuckers. I mean, they'll jump a 10 foot fence. I'm raising the next generation not to be fuckwits. Don't have kids if you don't want to, but just raise the next generation not to be fuckwits. That's a good project. No, let's not have the next generation. That's a better project. I mean, it's that simple. You're just missing the easy, you know. All you got to do is put the switch all the way up, and all of a sudden the lights turn on. And you're going right up next to it, and you're getting a little sparky-sparky. But yeah, all you, just a tiny little bit more, and you get it right. You get, oh, bingo, that solves the problem. Dan, 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 Just stop having stupid fucking retarded human beings. We don't fucking need them. They don't serve a purpose. Dan, 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 dan. Right? We don't need them, idiot. Oh, sorry. In my humble opinion, speaking as the fool on the hill, the mad scientist who pays rats on an endangered species sanctuary so I can use trespassing sheep for archery practice, in order to safeguard the wild native parsnips. Oh my god, <laughs> native parsnips. <gasps> yeah, that's kind of a silly thing to be saving. I don't really care for parsnips much. To eat when the supermarket fails. Yeah, well, everything's going to fail. That's the whole point. The whole fucking planet is going to fail. <laughs> it really is. It's got fail tattooed right on its ass. And it's just heading right for fail. It's going to fail in some sort of spectacular moment of big fucking fail. And the whole thing is just going to be one big long chain of fail. Fail, 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 fail. Super fail! I mean, that's it. And the only thing that could be redeeming in the whole thing is that human beings did the right thing at the right time. You know, and they ended the fail. 
They ended the meaning of fail. They stopped the fail from meaning anything. And wouldn't that be great? The fail would no longer mean anything. Yay! We could take all the, you know, pull the teeth out of the fail. <sighs> but we're not going to do that. Because of failures like you! <laughs> Fuck hard. So, till next time. So. Have a good one. Cheer. You likewise. Ciao and such and all that. I'll good luck. Put a, put a, whatever, a parsnip on the Barbie. Yeah, put a parsnip on the Barbie. So anyway, till next time and such and so forth and whatnot. Sorry, another long video. Yeah. Oof, 55 minutes. Outrageous. Outrageous, I say. Well, I said it, but yeah, I don't do anything about it.